Welcome to episode 776. The country is on fire right now. If you don't know what I mean, there was two huge decisions laid down by SCOTUS. One that had to deal with a case up in New York. Gun rights right there, big one. And then also the overturning i couldn't believe that this one happened but overturning of roe versus wade and it is a freak out in this country right now over the weekend there's been mass protests there's been mass uh shenanigans if you will gun case huge man for concealed carry in those states that have these May issue deals. And then, of course, they send the abortion rights stuff back to the states. Boy, the spin on these is just unreal. I find it funny in New York, they're all going around these politicians saying it's going to be like the wild, wild west. Man, that's the same argument that they used here in Illinois while they were passing everything. Saying it was going to be the wild, wild west, there's going to be shootouts on the streets, all that kind of stuff. Well, guess what? It never happened. And I bet those states right now are trying to work around these rulings. You watch, California is going to be the big one. Anyway, today we got a lot of good news happening. We're going to play that through. Then uh, our main stories, Sonoma Hells Angels, three of their members were convicted of RICO. Yeah, that story we have been uh, covering. They said they also killed one of their own. Then we go overseas where the Banditos Clubhouse was closed. Let's get to it. Johnson City today for a good cause. This weekend, the local chapter of the Southern Cruisers Riding Club hosted their 17th annual Rally and Benefit Ride. It's a ride spanning all of the Tri-Cities region's most beautiful towns. Bikers took off this morning at 10 a.m. from Johnson City. Many people came in from other chapters to participate, including from other states, Canada, and even Sweden. Organizers say that the profits from registration for the ride all benefit St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital in Memphis. It's a drop in a bucket to an organization the side of St. Jude's because their budget is unreal, what they spend to take care and everything like that. But it, it's dollars that they would not get if people here didn't actually support. Chapter 77 of the Southern Cruisers has been able to donate more than $83,000 to St. Jude over the years. The organization has donated more than $3 million total and the group has around 30,000 members worldwide. Motorcycle Club are helping the family of an Oklahoma toddler who has an extremely rare medical condition. Ryder Barnes was diagnosed with Bayless Ascaris, an extremely rare parasitic infection that quickly caused him to lose his sight and ability to drink and eat on his own. The Iron Pigs Motorcycle Club held a poker run and an auction to raise money for his medical cost. His parents, Colton and Alicia, say they will never be able to thank them enough for supporting their baby boy. And they're doing it um, for no reason other than just love, you know, and, and there's, if there was more uh, love like this spread throughout the world, it would probably be a much better place. The Barnes say Ryder is progressing steadily in his recovery. Female biker group 413 Biker Girls hosted their first annual ride this morning to honor fallen riders. Western Mass News reporter Leon Purvis has more on what this event meant to members of the group. We are having a ride out for all of our fallen riders. Um, meaning everyone has fallen off, all the, you know, deceased people that we know. Sharon Valentin, part of 413 Biker Girls, is one of the lead group members who helped put together the first ride out as they are honoring those who died in a motorcycle accident as this hits close to home for her. We've had a lot of close friends of ours pass away recently. Many bikers from all over came out to support the cause as the group is also honoring those recovering or dealing with the after effects of a motorcycle accident. I think it is good 
to donate that money to the person they need it. Having people come out makes Sharon feel like she is making a change. It makes us feel proud. It makes us feel like we're getting through to people on the community itself. And the message behind 413 Biker Girls? It's just all women. We are here to empower women writers um, and not only empower women, but we want to empower the community itself. We want women that don't ride to come into our group. And if you want to become a biker or join the 413 Biker Girls, information for that will be on our website, westernmassnews.com. That right there is the best part of biker news. Motorcycle clubs doing well, bikers doing well. It was awesome seeing them raise money for St. Jude's. St. Jude's is just a beautiful hospital. The parents or relatives don't have to pay for anything. Those kids are warriors down at St. Jude's Hospital. Beautiful stuff, man. Beautiful stuff. This is the time when a lot of bikers get together, raise money for their communities for great causes. I just wish they get more, uh, you know, press on this kind of stuff. But it always seems like it's only the bad stuff that's going to get you to press when it comes to biker related stuff. Because quite frankly, they know that the bad stuff sells. That's just the way it works, the way it goes. And hopefully, you know, clubs will start getting out there with some PR officers and start pushing back against some of the narratives that these uh, media folks have. But right now, we got something uh, going on in Danville. Let's take a look. Critical condition after Danville police responded to a shots fired report early Sunday morning. Police were on the scene at the 100 block of Commercial Street when they found the victim with a gunshot wound. Police say he was at a party when another man then fired shots at the victim. The suspect then fled the scene and police asked that if you do have any information on this specific incident to go ahead and contact them or Crime Stoppers. There you go out of Danville. I think that was Danville, Illinois, if I'm not mistaken, man. Uh, that's a what hour or something past uh, Chicago down south. But anyway, if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit that subscribe over on YouTube, our podcast and platforms. You always get full episodes of the show. China Dow comes in for the second segment of the show, and it's some fun stuff. But anyway, we're going to go over now to where we at? abc.net.au. Police dismantle Bandito's Outlaw Motorcycle Gang Clubhouse in Leeton. Remember what I said the other day? Um happy as hell to live in the United States of America because we do have a Bill of Rights over there. No. They seem to do whatever they want, man. Kind of like Canada, man. Uh, the police are just horrible over there in Canada. We read a story on that one where they were claiming that Hells Angels and others were laundering money through tattoo shops and all that. And I have to say, man, you know, that must be a tattoo shop that is banging to be able to launder money. Anyway, New South Wales police have dismantled a Bandito's gang clubhouse in the state's Riviana region. Uh oh, here we go. Strike Force Yanima. They got all these strike forces over there. Was established in February to investigate the activities of the Bandito's Outlaw Motorcycle Gang. Yeah, they're going to continue using that. Uh, two search warrants were executed uh, in the town of Leiden, 45 kilometers east of Griffith. I cannot freaking translate kilometers into miles. Uh, we were not, you know, I guess we were taught that, but I never listened. Anyway, a 48-year-old and 45-year-old man were arrested at the home on Kuhleman Street and a business on Turak Road. At the Kuhleman Street property, police located a Bandidos clubhouse, 
Police said they found items including knives, motorcycles, electronic devices, as well as a large amount of banditos paraphernalia, like clothing, vests, and an insignia. Well, duh, it's a clubhouse, morons. Uh, they had both been charged with participating in a criminal group with police alleging they were part of the banditos gang. They have been refused bail to appear before Griffith local court. You imagine that just being said, hey, you're a member of this or that and you get no bail? Man, that's messed up. A 39-year-old man and 37-year-old woman have also been arrested, have been charged with similar offenses. I don't know how she was. Uh, again, the man has been refused bail. <laughs> man, you guys have a bad over there. Uh, so there's been no real concern about their presence in town, but we're certainly concerned if there's any type of organized crime in town. So we congratulate the police on their efforts. It's always funny, even a lot of their studies over there says that clubs account for less than 1% of all the crime. But they spend a lot of time chasing them down instead of some real ones, man. I don't know. Uh, another one, here we go, out of Shores News Network. Uh, this was a U.S. Department of Justice press release. Three members of the Sonoma motorcycle gang convicted of racketeering conspiracy and related crimes. Uh, earlier today, a federal jury found Jonathan Nelson, a.k.a. John John, Brian Wayne Went, and Russell Taylor Ott, a.k.a. Russi, uh, guilty of murder in the aid of racketeering as part of their participation in a criminal enterprise involving their membership in the Sonoma County Charter of the Hell's Angels. Notice how they go after the whole club. There, this is three people. Out of how many that the angels have worldwide and in this country. But no, they go after the club. A lot of the times in these trials, instead of trying the individual, they'll put the club on trial, which really, I believe, biases uh, the jury pool. It really does. Uh, now. The special agent in charge was Sean Reagan. The verdict follows a nine-week trial before the Honorable Edward Chen. You always notice how these judges have to be called honorable. <laughs> Far from it. The jurors found all these members of a violent motorcycle gang killed one of their own and engaged in a conspiracy to commit many other serious criminal acts. Violent motorcycle gang. Gotta love the U.S. attorneys, man. This office is laser focused on removing from our neighborhoods those elements who use violence to achieve illegal goals. Well, why don't you guys go after the street gangs, man? You know, the ones standing on the corners, going around doing drive-bys, all that kind of stuff. You never go for them, do you, man? You never put them in the paper. It's only club stuff most of the time. Uh, today's verdicts are the result of an intense multi-year investigation and should serve as a notice to all such criminal enterprises. Huh. And they go on to say the verdict marks a milestone in the investigation that spanned nearly eight years. See, that's one thing that people don't understand is these RICO investigations take years to come to flourishing, and then for if there's informants involved, for the defense to get their hands on who they are, it, it takes a long time. And the ignorance of some people is just amazing when it comes to this type of stuff because they go off of emotion instead of facts. You know how it is. Anyway, we're going to go to the second half of the show. Don't forget again to subscribe over on YouTube. Pass us around. And uh, that helps the show right there. China Doll is coming in now 
after this music break. 